Good day, cute angels. Welcome to a new learning episode. I am Teacher Nancy Pineda, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module or your book, your pen, and paper to write your answers as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. In this lesson, I will be guiding you in the week 6 lesson for the second quarter of grade 8 mathematics. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to determine the relationship between the hypothesis and the conclusion of an if-then statement and transform a statement into an equivalent if-then statement. Let us start our lesson with the conditional statements or if-then statements. A conditional statement or if-then statement is composed of two clauses, the if clause and the then clause. We can denote a letter for each clause, P for the if clause and Q for the then clause. The statement is in the form of if P then Q. Conditional statements are formed by joining two statements, P and Q, using the words if and then. The P statement is called the hypothesis, the part of conditional statement that follows if, when written in if-then form. It is the given information or premise. The Q statement is the conclusion, the part of an if-then statement that follows then, when written in if-then form. It is the result of the given information. In some conditional statements, conclusions are written before the hypothesis. Let us now determine which one is the hypothesis and which one is the conclusion. Let us find out by identifying the hypothesis and the conclusion of a given conditional statement written in if-then form. Here are the examples. Identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of an if-then statement. For number one, we have the conditional statement or the if-then statement if an animal is a bird, then it has feathers. The hypothesis of this statement is an animal is a bird and the conclusion is it has feathers for number two we have the statement if today is friday then tomorrow is weekend the hypothesis of this statement is today is friday and the conclusion is tomorrow is weekend next we have the statement if a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. The hypothesis of this statement is a number is even, and the conclusion is it is divisible by 2. Next, we have the statement if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. The hypothesis of this statement is Two angles are right angles, and the conclusion is, they are congruent. And for the conditional statement number 5, if a polygon has 5 sides, then it is a pentagon. The hypothesis of this statement is, a polygon has 5 sides, and the conclusion is, it is a pentagon. Now you learned how to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of a given conditional statement. The if statement is the hypothesis and the then statement is the conclusion. Furthermore, you also learned that in the conditional statement written in if-then form, the part of the conditional statement that follows the if clause is the hypothesis and the part of the conditional statement that follows the then clause is the conclusion. For example, in the statement, if a polygon is a triangle, then it has 
three sides. The hypothesis is a polygon is a triangle. While the conclusion is it has three sides. If we are going to rewrite the given statement in this way, a triangle is a polygon with three sides. This statement is also considered a conditional statement. However, it is not written in if-then form. So let us take note that not all conditional statements are written in if-then form. These are the kinds of conditional statements that needs to be converted to if-then form. We may reward the hypothesis and conclusion depending on how it is being stated. Let us master first how to identify the hypothesis and conclusion of the given statements for us to easily transform the conditional statements into if-then form. Let us have the following examples. We have the conditional statement, vertical angles are congruent. The hypothesis of the statement is, two angles are vertical. And the conclusion is, they are congruent. Therefore, if we are going to combine these two statements using the words if and then, the if-then form is, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Next, we have the statement, an obtuse triangle is a triangle with an obtuse angle. The hypothesis is an obtuse triangle, while the conclusion is a triangle with an obtuse angle. Rewriting this into its if-then form, we have, if it is an obtuse triangle, then it has an obtuse angle. Remember that we may reward the hypothesis and conclusion depending on how it is being stated. Next, we have the statement, two angles are complementary if the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. The hypothesis of the statement, two angles are complementary if the sum of their measures is 90 is, two angles are complementary. And the conclusion is, the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. The if-then form of this statement is, if two angles are complementary, then the sum of their measures is 90 degrees. Next, for number 4, we have the conditional statement, all prime numbers are odd. The hypothesis is, all prime numbers, and the conclusion is, are odd. Rewriting this into its if-then form, we have, if all numbers are prime, then they are odd. Remember that we may reward the hypothesis and the conclusion depending on how it is being stated. For statement number 5, we have a mathematical statement 4x plus 5 equals 29 when x is equal to 6. The hypothesis of this statement is 4x plus 5 equals 29 while the conclusion is when x is equal to 6. Combining these two using the words if and then, we have if 4x plus 5 is equal to 29, then x is equal to 6. For number 6, the statement is, you are safe if you stay at home. The hypothesis of the statement is, you stay at home. While the conclusion is, you are safe. Rewriting this into its if-then form, we have, if you stay at home, then you are safe. For example number 7, we have the conditional statement, I will pass the course if I pass the exam. The hypothesis is, I pass the exam. While the conclusion is, I will pass the course. Converting this into the if-then form, we have, if I pass the exam, then I will pass the course. And for example number 8, 
the conditional statement is Anna will bring umbrella when it is raining. The hypothesis is it is raining. And the conclusion is Anna will bring umbrella. Converting this statement into its if-then form, the result is if it is raining, then Anna will bring umbrella. Notice that in examples 1 to 5, you can easily identify the hypothesis and conclusion of each given statement. The hypothesis is found in the first part of the conditional statement, while the conclusion is in the second part of the statement. However, in examples 6 to 8, the hypothesis is found on the last part, while the conclusion is found on the first part of the conditional statement. Therefore, we can conclude that a hypothesis is not always found in the first part of the statement. Sometimes, we have to interpret the statement to determine the hypothesis and conclusion first before we can rewrite the statement in if-then form. Now your turn. Let us put that understanding to the test by answering the drill. Will you be able to correctly transform a conditional statement into its equivalent if-then form? You can type your answers on our comment section. Let us start. For number 1, the hypothesis and the conclusion is already given. The hypothesis is a triangle has no sides congruent. And the conclusion is the triangle is iskalin. Now transform this into an if-then form. Your 15 seconds starts now. Time's up. If your answer is, if a triangle has no sides congruent, then it is iskalin. Then you are correct. Number 2, the hypothesis is BR bisects angle ABC. And the conclusion is, angle ABR is congruent to angle RBC. What is the if-then form of this statement? Alright, the if-then form is, if BR bisects angle ABC, then angle ABR is congruent to angle RBC. For number 3, we have the statement, two perpendicular lines form four right angles. Now, transform this into an if-then form. The if-then form of the statement two perpendicular lines form four right angles is if two lines are perpendicular, then they form four right angles. For number four, the measure of an obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. Transform this into an if-then form. You have 15 seconds to answer. The if-then form is, if an angle is obtuse, then the measure of the angle is greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 degrees. And for number 5, the statement is, congruent angles have the same measure. Now transform this into an if-then form. Your 15 seconds starts now. The answer is, if two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure.
Good job, read 8 learners. Let us have another activity. Complete me. On your activity notebook, copy and answer the following. You may also type your answers on our comment section. The direction is, convert each conditional statement into if-then form. For number 1, all squares are a rectangle. Complete the statement if blank, then blank. For number 2, a polygon with 9 sides is a nonagon. Complete the statement if blank, then blank. Number 3, the statement is collinear points lie on the same line. Complete the statement if blank, then blank. Number 4, the statement is come here and you will get a reward. Complete the statement if blank, then blank. And for number 5, the statement is equilateral triangles are equiangular. Complete the statement if blank, then blank. You did great today. Don't forget to send your answers. And if you have questions, feel free to ask on the comment section. Before we end our episode today, let me leave you with this thought to ponder. Let us follow God's ifs in order to see God's thens carried out in our lives. That's all for now. Again, this is Teacher Nancy Pineda, your teacher for grade 8 math. Have a nice day and God bless us all.